Good morning, everyone. What is in your pot today? I'm actually just doing a super late breakfast, aka brunch. And we're going to be doing sauteed Parmesan potatoes. I couldn't even find the recipe, so I'm totally going to do it from memory. But the most important thing is to definitely start off with fresh ingredients. So we have our bell peppers. I think we're gonna need more bell peppers in this, but we're gonna get these um, sauteed so that they're translucent. Then we're gonna add our potatoes. Um, on the side, we already have some Canadian ham and chicken and, what is this one? Chicken and, uh, anyway, this is chicken sausage. That's absolutely wonderful. Love to get the ones that have no preservatives because you know any kind of processed meat that has the preservatives in it is linked to all sorts of cancers. So that's really important. We use our nifty, we love gadgets in my kitchen that are useful gadgets. So here we use our nifty, um, this is olive oil, and we use our measurer to know exactly how much olive oil we're using because a lot of times you just pump it accurately. A lot of times we use too much oil for the purposes of cooking. So, we make sure that we use just enough. Um, and I think we need a little bit more of this before we start to add our potatoes. And then we're going to do some onions towards the end. But this recipe is simple. It's kind of like a breakfast potato. So you saute it with all your fresh um, seasoning. Then a little bit of garlic powder, a little bit of salt and pepper. And then uh, we're also going to add in the, the onions towards the end and just sprinkle it with a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Um, I think you can probably use most different types of cheese, but um, to kind of give it like a nice coating. Okay, so now um, our bell peppers basically are looking pretty good. We're just gonna go ahead and add our cubed potatoes and folks. Very, very um, simple. We're just using the red potatoes. Um, I suspect you can use any kind of potatoes that you want. It doesn't really matter. And we'll just put those in. And toss those around so that they can mix in nicely with the veggies. I think you can totally add more veggies. It just depends on um, kind of how much of it you like. So we're gonna just toss it nicely. So that it also picks up a little bit of the olive oil in the potatoes. And some of them when you cut them, so we can cube them. And um, some of them still come out a little bit baked, so we can always just make sure that they're separated properly. They are properly coated and mixed in. And of course, once the potatoes soften, they're gonna take up the flavor and as they continue to saute. And this is, I've got my heat on low, because this is, um, we're gonna turn it up a little bit here in a second, just to get the potatoes to cook a little bit quicker. But yeah, you can see how it's starting to look nice and colorful with all of your um, peppers that you've added in. And again, you can use as much as little of those as you want, I guess. Um, now we're gonna add some seasoning. So everybody's trying to be healthier. So we're gonna use no salt seasoning. So just give it a little bit of seasoning flavor. So a lot of people think that you have to use salt the flavor with, obviously, you do not. And a lot of times, I don't cook with salt at all, and people never notice it. I think it's just out of habit. It's just a bad habit why most people feel like they have to use salt. You ever notice people who actually put salt on 
their um, food before they even taste it. It's like, how do you know how much salt the chef has cooked with if you haven't tasted it? It's just habit, right? And then I absolutely love this mixed up pepper. They come with, they do a mixed up salt as well, but I couldn't buy that one. So this one is almost done actually. I'm just gonna put the remainder of this on here. I'm gonna add this to my grocery list now. Um, Oh, that's it, it's done. Oh, and I'll add a little bit of fresh pepper here in a second as well. You guys can probably hear I've got a toddler in the background who is watching a little bit of TV and enjoying her Sunday morning. garlic pepper or powder and we're gonna do some onion powder as well because fresh onions a little bit later on so toss it good make sure that your potatoes get all that lovely flavor and you guys know i love to cook but i haven't been in the kitchen in a minute um so many reasons why but mostly just like super super busy and so the first thing we get on the list is like the cooking. I love, to me cooking is like so therapeutic and fun. I love trying out new recipes and sharing recipe ideas with people. This is a recipe I actually got, um, I saw it first in Foster's. And I'm trying to locate the recipe because I can't find the recipe, but. So for this recipe, it's important that we actually cover it. And we're gonna turn off the heat just a little bit. So about medium high, because we want these potatoes to try to soften as quickly as possible. All right, so you know potatoes stick really, really easily. So you've gotta be careful with them. You want to move them around. You're not really over handling them because they'll start to break up as well. But just ensure that they're not sticking to the bottom. So listen. Doesn't matter how much your pot cleans but it's non-stick. I mean it never is really. So you guys know for a minute now I have been talking about doing a cooking show here in CMR because who doesn't love to cook and watch people cook and you know, but what I want to do is I want to go into people's homes and like talk to them about life and came out and see their recipes and share a meal with them, you know? There's so many ideas for CMR and I think 2021 is definitely the year that I want to launch a couple of these projects. Even if it's just like once a month, we're going to continue to have a lot of really good conversations. So, um... Trust me, it smells legit delicious. So we'll allow that to continue to cook. We're gonna add our onions in a little bit later. The onions are not, they don't take much to become translucent. So we kind of add those towards the end because we want them to have a little bit more flavor. So I've got some local plantain. My daughter has some plantain, which is kind of weird because she normally doesn't like plantain. But we're gonna get some plantain going because we bought them from the farmer's market yesterday. So you guys know that we've also been doing a little local gardening ourselves, getting tomatoes and stuff like that. So maybe I'll do my famous tomato um, salad recipe with you guys soon. So I'm going to do some planting. And I'm just thinking what else we can have for breakfast this morning. She requested pancakes, but that's like full on a whole other thing to be honest. So see how we get on. But yeah, cooking shows coming. We need to come up with a nice fancy name for it for CMR. Um, yeah. So we're going to launch a youth show this year. We're going to do some cooking segments. We're going to continue our conversations with, with elderly members of our community. And by the way, if you are a company that wants to sponsor 
any of our segments, feel free to reach out. We will be happy to speak with you about that. a cooking show with the gas stove, by the way, we believe we're trying to cut back on our utility bill as much as possible. So this is gas, um, and I find that gas really looks differently than an electric stove. I didn't get into gas stove until maybe past 10 years or so, but I love them. I absolutely love them. So it's a totally different experience. So let's get a little bit of a closer look. Yeah, what's going on in our pot? Look at that. Do smoke them? Mmm, delicioso. Looking good, looking good. So we're going to toss it in a little bit, and then we're going to add in our onions. And then in the meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead and get my plantains ready. Okay, so I just added my oil for my plantain. Now I'm trying to use as little oil as possible. It is, um, I either try to use primarily olive oil or avocado oil. So like the, the oils that are a little bit healthier. Um, so I am, by the way, I need some new pots. Can you tell this one? It's like the scrubbing is out of this world. Yes, ma'am. Okay, the cartoon is getting exciting. There's a crocodile in the cartoon. It's, it's okay. There's lots of them. <laughs> Barbie will be okay, don't worry. Um, so yes, this is what happens when you're multitasking. Okay, I'm gonna come and look at the crocodiles. So um, I try to use as little as possible because you know we love plantains, but unfortunately, plantains is one of those things that yeah, it's more school. welcome. Um, plantains are one of those things that will absorb every bit of that oil and for like heart health it's not really the best option. So most of us try to pat down our plantains right away. And the other thing is I have an air fryer now. I've not unboxed it yet but I think I'll just do an unboxing video. And I understand that you can actually do plantains in the air fryer. So instead of frying your food, it's the idea between behind the air fryer that you can use air to fry a lot of these things and it makes it a lot healthier like cutting like something like 80 percent of the fat so we want to start doing some recipes with that for sure so i'm just going to let this heat up a little bit um, more and then we're going to stick our plantains in there pat them down right away and then i'm going to go back and check on my potatoes okay so we have a Chopped onions are now going in. Now, let me tell you about onions. I actually do not like onions in terms of like, don't ever put an onion on a burger for me. I don't eat raw onions. I don't like onions like that. But onions are just a staple dish when it comes to cooking. They add a lot of flavor um, to your meal. And so I try to chop them up. Sometimes I do them super, super fine. But yeah, when it comes to cooking certain things, you know, the onions are important. And those staple things, honey, add lots and lots of flavor. So as you can see, our potatoes are starting to brown. And so we just want to toss them to try to get them somewhat evenly coated in terms of the browning process as possible. We always have some that are going to brown a little bit more than others. And then we just added the um, onions in, so we're going to cover it again and just allow it to continue to um, cook down a bit. And then now I'm going to go back over to my plantains and see what the situation is there. All right, so potatoes, as you can see, are pretty much done. I'm going to just add a little bit of um, cheese. Now, to be honest, I think it was just supposed to be Parmesan cheese that is supposed to be added to this, but I'm gonna do a little bit of um, mozzarella as well as Parmesan. I'm actually mixed the two. 
So, um, you can get so creative with cheeses. Though. I find that cheeses are really interesting to work with. There's so many luxury cheeses that exist. And basically, we're going to just allow that to kind of bake on top. Cover it back up. It's on low because it's like done. The, tomato, the potatoes are soft and um, they don't need to be like overcooked now. So we're going to just give it a few more minutes while that kind of like does a melt on top. And then we're going to transfer it out of that dish onto our serving dish. And then pretty much that's it. So just keep it covered. You see it's melting already. It's not going to take long to melt and then just soak it. All right, so we add a little bit of parsley on top for garnishing purposes. And voila, it is done. And now we're gonna get our spatula and scoop some of this lovely potato dish out. And there's our finished product, folks. Um, we've got a few pieces of plantain, our chicken sausage, our Canadian bacon, and there's our sauteed potatoes. It makes a wonderful, I put it on a small plate, by the way. Um, it looks like a lot, but some of those like little miniature plates. So uh, it makes a wonderful, hearty breakfast. Of course, you can add um, some fruits to complement it as a starter. But uh, yeah, yummy, who is ready to dig in? I know I am.